Welcome back. In this session, I'm going to talk about porting MIPS FPGA to other boards. So as an example, I'm going to use the BASIS 3 board, but the process is the same for other FPGA boards as well. You may want to do this because of existing supply or choosing a less expensive option. So the steps for porting MIPS FPGA to other boards are to first change the wrapper module and also the Xilinx design constraints file to map the top level I.O. pins to the FPGA board. And depending on the amount of memory available on your FPGA board, you may need to change that as well. The files for the BASIS 3 board are available with the MIPS FPGA Getting Started Guide distribution. Regardless of which FPGA board you're targeting, these steps will remain the same. Again, the example I'm going to use is the BASIS 3 board shown here. It's available from Digilent and includes a Xilinx Arctic 7 FPGA. If we compare this board with the Nexus 4 DDR board, we can see that it costs about half as much. It contains the same FPGA on it, the Arctic 7 FPGA, but a smaller version. So it has less memory, fewer logic cells, and the board itself offers fewer peripherals. So instead of eight seven-segment displays, for example, it offers four. So the first step in porting MIPS FPGA to the BASIS 3 board is to change the wrapper module. So here we see the interface for the BASIS 3 wrapper module looks pretty similar to the Nexus 4 DDR board one. Has clock, push button interfaces, switches, LEDs, the EJTAG interface, and the UART interface. And again, as I said, that file is provided as part of the Getting Started Guide distribution. The next step is to change the Xilinx design constraints file. This is provided by Xilinx and Digilent basically maps our pins to the location on the board. So for example, pin V17 of the FPGA is routed on the board to switch zero. Now we might also need to change the memory amounts on the MIPS FPGA system. As you recall, we have two types of memory, the boot RAM and the program RAM. If we look at the memory available on the BASIS 3 and Nexus 4 DDR board, you'll notice that the BASIS 3 has 225 kilobytes as opposed to the 607 kilobytes on the Nexus 4 DDR board. As you recall, the MIPS FPGA system has boot code of one kilobyte and user code of 256 kilobytes. But this amount won't fit on the BASIS 3 board as it only has 225 kilobytes available altogether. But that's no problem we can simply reduce the size of the user code. So we leave the boot code at one kilobyte and reduce the user code to 64 kilobytes. We do this by changing the constants in the MIPS FPGA HB constants file, MFP HB const.vh. And that's it. We follow these simple steps and we can now port our MIPS FPGA system to our FPGA of choice. Let's go ahead and demonstrate the MIPS FPGA system running on the BASIS 3 board. We'll plug in our programming cable as usual and our bus blaster probe. Notice that uh, PMOD port B is on the top right of the BASIS 3 board. And don't forget to turn it on. Now we'll download our system, our MIPS FPGA system, again provided with the Getting Started Guide distribution. You can also create your own Vivado project and synthesize and compile it yourself as well. Now, on this board, there is no extra CPU reset push button, so we map the center push button to the reset input of the MIPS FPGA system. And we can see that it's running its default program that's already loaded into the MIPS FPGA memory. As an example, let's load a different program using the Bus Blaster Probe. This is the read switches program from Lab 2 that simply flashes the value of the switches on the LEDs. And now we can see that just like with the Nexus 4 DDR board, we can load a program using the Bus Blaster Probe. Change the switches and we can see different values flashing on the LEDs.